So today we're going to continue to expand on the idea that we touched on just a little bit with the signals and the groups, which is having chunks of code that are independent. Uh, what another word would be a modular coding. Uh, there's chunks of code that run and are independent. They don't depend on other parts of the game to run. Uh, and how we're going to do that is we're going to have all three types of map generations that we have been working on, and we're going to get them all into this one game. So right now we just have the A-star map. Uh, it's using this tile map right here, and it's doing exactly what we left off last time. I just zoomed out the camera a little bit. Just, But what we're going to do now is we're going to go into, uh, if we go into the script. Last time we added this code. And we're going to basically copy and paste it to the drunkard script and the smooth map script. Uh, we're going to be sending the signals and we're going to be finding open spaces. Now we have some duplicate code here, uh, but I'm going to leave it for now because I believe it gives more clarity to what's going on. Uh, eventually, especially this find open spaces and the and the signals that we're talking about, it could end up in a game script uh, just to not have so much duplicate code, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I know that a lot of people say duplicate code is kind of taboo, but if it helps with clarity and is just getting things put together, we can optimize things later. We don't really have a memory problem or or a need that much optimization yet so we'll worry about that later and the one extra thing is there's this line right here uh, in the smoothing map if you remember uh, we have to actually smooth the map a few times because I was doing that manually with a button and we just want that to happen right away so after we update all of those things we're actually gonna go here and we're gonna just delete this node from the scene tree and I went ahead and made just a node 2d and renamed it a map container and I'll turn the visibility on and so one of the things to remember when you make the structure of a game is I, I really like containers I'll have a container for the map I'll have a container for items I'll have a container for enemies uh, just so I know where they are and so I can find them and delete them, or I know where to add them to, so I can find them later. Also, for rendering and getting them in the correct layer, uh, they can render on the wrong Z level if you just add them willy-nilly to the tree. And I just like to have, just keep track of everything. So we're going to go to the game, and I prepped the script here. I'll load. We'll take a look at that. So the first thing we're going to do is preload all of the map scenes into a variable so we can keep track of them. And then we're going to put them in an array uh, simply so we can pick, a, pick one randomly. So when it's ready, there's a little bit of duplicate code here again, but just for clarity, we're going to, when we're ready, we're going to pick out a new map. So this first part is just picking a random one from the array. And then we're going to make an instance of that, and we will add that instance to the map container. Uh, this is just so I can click enter and go to the next map, which this is uh, the same function basically, except we have to remove the previous map from the map container. Otherwise, you'll get a whole bunch of layers going on, and your open spaces array will get very convoluted. So we're going to empty out the container and put a new map in it. And what it looks like is this. So then here we have a smooth map, another smooth map, and you always find an empty space, but you can have just different types of maps in your game to make it a little bit more interesting. 